Welcome back to Radio 2. Today we're starting with the first lesson of voice and performance. It's part one of six. And I think you'll find this a really interesting lesson. Um, we'll be looking at people with natural or people with abilities to do amazing things with their voices in detail. And we'll start teaching you um, about how to use your voice when you are on air. Okay, so today we're using both textbooks. So you can look at page 112 in Next Level Radio and page 207 to page 215 in Beyond Powerful Radio by Valerie Geller. First things first, you've heard a lot of voices in your life. You have an idea of what your voice sounds like, what your limitations are to your voice. What do you think makes a voice stand out? What type of voice for you um, would say professional uh, or something that stands out? I'm going to play a couple of voice clips for you, um, different types of voices in different types of situations. And while I'm playing this, I want you to make notes um, and tell me what is it that you think makes these voices of these professionals exceptional? Because the voices I'm going to play to you now is professional, um, or they are professionals. And then I want you to sit and think about it a little bit. And you must let me know. Uh, do you believe, do you think that you can develop a similar skill set uh, or traits with practice? We start with the first one. Paula Sela is a real Geico customer, not an actor. So to help tell her story, we hired that announcer guy from the movies. When the storm hit, both our cars were totally underwater. In a world where both of our cars were totally underwater. We thought it would take forever to get some help. But a new wind was about to blow. With Geico, we had our check in two days. Payback. This time, it's for real. Geico. Real service, real savings. So that was an example of the amazing Don uh, LaFontaine doing one of the spots that he did. If you go and look at it, he's got so many things that he did. Um, so that was the first one. So here's one from Charlize Theron. If it's out there, Dior will find it. The most desired secret ever. Born in the sun, water, air, fire, and earth. To the edge of the world. You don't discover this essence. It discovers you. J'adore Dio. Okay, then there's an animation from Kate Higgins. Kate Higgins. Wow, I used to sound like that. What a baby. Yeah, guess what? You still are. Ha ha. You guys are so obnoxious. I can't stand having a little brother and sister. Oh, come on, kids. Stop the fighting. What do I need to get out the belt? <gasps> did I just say that out loud? Actually, darling, you did say that out loud. I don't know what's wrong with you. I raised you to be a good girl, not some schizophrenic freak. Well, I am, Mama. I am schizophrenic. Actually, they don't call it schizophrenic. They say multiple personalities. And I do have quite a few of them. In fact, would you like to talk about it over a spot of tea? Yes, Master. I mean, Mother. We can go to the dojo and talk to the very wise sensei. You know, actually, if I think about it, this disorder is really some sort of coping mechanism because it's very hard to live in this modern world and it beats binging on curry. Da, you can use these voices like some sort of disguise so you can escape this crazy world. Or you can just drink a lot of vodka. Mm -mm. Did somebody say escape? Oh, Lord, I got to get out of here, too. All them crazy voices flip-flopping up around in here. I'll get you out of here. Escaping is what I do best. Follow me. I say it's time to put an end to this. Wait a minute. Don't you want to hear the fat lady sing? <gasps> 
someone shoot her! There's a couple of amazing people out there, hey? So this one is, um, so Stephen Fry is one of my all time favorites just because of the type of voices that he can do. Um, so whether you're a Harry Potter fan or not, um, he's, his voiceover um, of Harry Potter on Audible, I just think is amazing. So what is Quidditch? That's our sport, wizard sport. It's like, like football in the muggle world. Everyone follows Quidditch, played up in the air on broomsticks, and there's four balls. It's sort of hard to explain the rules. And what are Slytherin and Hufflepuff? School houses. There's four. Everyone says Hufflepuff for a lot of duffers, but I bet I'm in Hufflepuff, said Harry gloomily. Better Hufflepuff than Slytherin, said Hagrid darkly. There's not a single witch or wizard who went bad who wasn't in Slytherin. You know who was one. Okay, so that'll give you a good example of, or a good idea of what he can do. And then there's one last clip that we're going to uh, listen to. Guys, listen to me. I don't think I'm better or tougher than anyone. I mean, believe it or not, I fancy myself more of a buddy. Holy cow, that hurt. My face is on fire. What's it look like I'm doing? I'm doing superhero stuff. Fit, 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 fit. Anybody comes in here looking for trouble, oh, they're going to meet my partners. And I'm talking about Paul and Order. First of all, I want to welcome White Thunder back from the washing machine, who was put in there with a red blanket. And henceforth, will be known as Pink Thunder. Personally, Ringo. That's what I said. Oh! Oh, the door. <laughs> okay. Okay, plan B. For self, and I think you'll find the people of this here town to be surprisingly hospitable. Thank right, you, sir. Yeah. What? Not you again. Uh, stand correct. I hope this turns out better than your plan to cook rice in your stomach by eating it raw and then drinking boiling water. Poe, why are you really out here? I just found out that my dad... The hardcore do understand. But I can't watch my friend be killed. We're not gonna let you ruin our town! You think there's nothing in the world you can't own? You mean a discus? Some people don't know anything about sports. Ugh. Let me just try one more time. Honestly, there's a million reasons why you're not attracted to me, but give me another. <laughs> just the sassiest. And once the moon is mine, the world will give me whatever I want to get it back. And I will be the greatest villain of all time. That's what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm saying. Just go with me. Look at those fangs. I could have been a contender. Well, I can't do any more damage around here. Three. This little bad guy went to market. I'm not kidding. Well, Ellie giggled. And then she wiggled. <laughs> Boom. Uh, okay. Party's over, everybody. Have a good night and leave right now. Ooh, look at me. I'm Julian. Ooh, ooh, I know. We destroy the relationship, right? That way we never have to let her go, and she'll just stay our little girl forever. <laughs> Your attention, please. Your attention, please. I have an announcement to make. I'm bored. Ha <laughs> ha. You think you're bored? What about all those poor suckers out there in the audience? Ah, yeah, they just keep praying that their category is next. Well, as long as they are praying and while we're at it, I get to anoint their feet. You keep your hands off me, you little twink, or I'll call the cops. My daddy's a cop. His breath smells like cat food. And that, my friends, how I make a living. I see what's happening, yeah. It, honestly, I could go on and on. I could explain every natural phenomenon. The tides, the grass, the ground. Oh, that was now we just messing around. And I make everything happen. <laughs> The 
here's the pod. When you're staring at a demigod, what can I say? Welcome. And thank you. <laughs> My birthday cake's going to have the coolest guy on it. I don't know. And this mommy and daddy, can we call him every night? Mommy, did you get my picture? Did you get it, Mom? I got it! Oh, no! Check it out every- I love red! And my flu? Yeah, even your cute little flu. I feel like you're gonna be okay. I want to be an engineer. So again, we listened to quite a few different types of voices now, people that can do a lot with their voice. And I mean, how amazing is Nancy Cartwright with all of the um, characters that she does? Anyway, so what is it that, according to you, make these voices and the delivery of these professionals exceptional? And then again, is it something that you think you can um, start to develop with practice? Your voice is your brush that paints the picture. And if it does not perform at its best, the story loses color, detail, warmth, and meaning. When it comes to radio personalities, many of them don't like the sound of their own voice. Um, I've done so many air checks and snoop sessions in the past where I've sat with presenters hearing themselves for the first time, and they literally all cringe. They're, it's like they really don't like the sound of their voices. The reason behind this is because the voice that we hear inside our head and through our sinuses is not the same as the voice we hear on a recording of ourselves. Um, and if you add compressors and microphones, and fancy amplifiers, um, then our voice can sound completely foreign. Have you ever recorded yourself? Have you recorded your voice and played it back to yourself to actually hear what you sound like? That's perhaps a good place to start. Many of these personalities' insecurities come from the, it comes from the idea that in order to be a great radio personality, you need to have that classic radio voice. Um, a very good example of this is DJ Fresh's voice. It's one of those that I grew up with. I grew up with um, a whole lot of presenters who all had these, who all had these radio voices that they put on for their shows. Before I carry on now, I want you to think about the radio presenters that you listen to today. How many of them actually have that deep, uh, full voice um, today? Is it still a necessity? Do you think it's still something that's needed on air? Or do you think there's other ways that we're making up for it? The truth is, presenters don't need to have any of those voice attributes um, for them to be good radio presenters. A brilliant character, personality and style, the way that one writes um, and how you deliver content is what makes a great personality, not one's voice. There have been many very successful um, radio personalities, both locally and around the world, that have been hugely successful um, without having that radio voice. And some of these include Darren Simpson, Mark Gilman locally. Um, if you look at the global market, then Howard Stern and Sean Hannity are two very good examples. From a local point of view, Sumizi is even another one that you can put in there. None of them have that typical classic sounding voice. However, they've all been very successful. Do you remember Tracy Johnson from our previous lesson? Um, we spoke a lot about what Tracy Johnson had to say. Had to say. Well, Tracy Johnson says that if your voice is acceptable, it's fine for being on air. The biggest thing to note is you shouldn't try to force your voice to be something that it's not. Also, try to focus um, less on the dynamic range and more on character range in your personality. As a presenter, you're either born with a beautiful voice or a voice with less range, depth and warmth than DJ Fresh. If you are one of the gifted few, that's great. But try to forget about your voice and focus rather on your personality. If you're one of the many out there who have not been so lucky in the voice department, you just need to make peace with the voice that you have and be yourself. The biggest mistake that radio presenters try to make is to sound like something or someone that's not them. Remember, listeners are really smart. 
um, listeners instinctively and almost immediately pick up on inauthenticity. And anything unnatural um, and forced is a huge turnoff to listeners. Think about it yourself. Um, it's the thing about you literally hear someone trying to be something they're not on air. I don't know about you, but it puts me off immediately. The problem with um, trying to be something you're not, like I've said, is that this person already exists. So what's going to happen if you try and mimic that 1950s voice, but it's not who you are, um, is that you'll probably never be successful as a radio presenter or a radio personality. Always remember that the base radio creates the illusion of a one-on-one -on -one conversation between you and the listener. It's personal and it's real. This being said, there's always small things you can do to work on your voice. Um, just to give you some insight for me, I, I trained my voice for years from a singing perspective. So I have an extremely loud voice and um, my voice doesn't disappear no matter how long I speak uh, or how loud I speak because it's been trained over a long period of time. And so there are however small changes and techniques that you can adopt and use. The first and most crucial pointer for anyone using their voice is to learn to relax. Why? Because a nervous and tense body or mind will lead your voice becoming pitchy, to speaking too quickly, and to your personality being constricted. That is why it's necessary to always warm up the body and the voice before you go on air. This is something you pick up often um, when people aren't used to talking in front of crowds and they need to uh, deliver a speech, um, then you can always hear that voice pitch going higher and you can hear them starting to talk faster. Well, that's what happens when someone really tenses up. Okay, so it's important to learn to relax. So this is something that you might not have known, but your breathing doesn't come from, um, from your lungs. It comes from your diaphragm. This is again, if you've ever had any kind of vocal teaching, they would have started by teaching you how to uh, use your diaphragm. Breath controls your voice. Um, so it's important to start, if you have never exercised your diaphragm, start doing it. There's a good exercise in the book on page 113. Next, warm up your facial muscles and specifically your lips. The next exercise is to work up and is to work and warm up your tongue so that you don't um, get tongue twisted when you go on air. And then finally, just hum your favorite song for a couple of minutes, um, just pretty much in the same tone before you go on air and start using your voice. This is especially helpful if you do a show very late in the evenings, let's say, I don't know, the breakfast, uh, the graveyard shift at two or three o'clock in the morning. So you might have slept before that. Your voice will be very groggy. It's very good to do some of these exercises before going on air then. Or even if you do breakfast, um, because you probably wouldn't have spoken to anyone yet. So your voice isn't warm isn't warm. So it's imperative that you do these kind of um, techniques. Something to remember is many times um, the nervousness in your voice comes from your body, your body being um, nervous, stressed out or anxious. Looking after your physical well-being by doing things like yoga or meditation will help reduce your stress levels, which on the long run will help with any vocal tension that you might have. Sometimes all you need is a simple tip to, um, to sound better and fix what you might think is a voice problem. On page 208, about in the middle, there's a section where Valerie Geller writes, one of the most brilliant and successful voiceover artists in the United States is Randy Thomas. In her book, Voice for Hire, she writes, your whole body from head to toe is your instrument. In order to play good music, you must first learn, you must first learn to play the instrument. Never allow the confines of a voiceover booth, no matter how small it might be, to inhibit you. 
your arms, shoulders, fingers, knees, and hips can accentuate what you do as an actor. Let's not forget the face. There are more muscles in the human face than in the rest of the entire human body. That should give you some indication of the degree to which you can work your facial muscles to manipulate your voice, which is, after all, also a physical entity. No one cares what you look like in the booth. Frankly, no one is watching, including you. And that's extremely true. Um, I've stood watching some of these voice artists in the booths um, just do their thing, and they have no care in the world. They just go and try to deliver the best product that they possibly can. We just mentioned that a variety of the problems uh, with the voice can be fixed if you work to correct your breathing. Often the trouble is simply not getting enough air. This is where voice coach Dr. Anne S. Utterback says that you must yawn. Yawning has been used for centuries as a technique for relaxing the throat. Proper breathing begins low in the torso around your waist. You should literally feel your stomach expand as you inhale and contract as you exhale. And then there's water. Water is like the magic elixir uh, for your voice. But you can also use any decaffeinated, unsweetened, non-alcoholic drink. We have to keep drinking fluid all day long for it to be effective. So make sure to drink a lot of water and always have that water bottle with you. Again, um, the focus is on the tension of the job itself that you might be doing um, and the exhaustion and the psychological demands of the work. And then what this does to your body. And this at the end of the day affects your voice once again. If you can learn to relax that kind of problem will miraculously disappear. All it takes in this case is by breathing deeply, drinking a lot of water, and doing things like yoga or meditation during the day. The next one is bad writing. Sometimes the problem isn't the voice at all. Um, the problem is the copy. Good natural conversation starts with a good script. The best advice here is just to keep it simple. Avoid big words, wasted words, um, odd words, fancy words, or cliches. Don't use long, complicated sentence construction. The more natural the writing sounds, the easier it would be to read or to perform on air. A lot of looking after and caring for your voice is common sense. And a lot of these are being repeated because they're important. So drink a lot of water, stand up in front of the microphone. Reason for this is just for um, more power and energy because if you stand up, you open your diaphragm versus if you sit, it's closed. Relax, breathe deeply, speak from that diaphragm. If you really have a cold, please stay at home. Firstly, you can ruin your voice by working when you're sick and secondly, you can infect the entire radio station if you do a show um, when you're extremely sick. And then try hot tea. Or if you don't like hot tea, for instance, it's not for everyone, uh, just try and avoid things like milk, cheese, um, popcorn. I would put in chocolate there too, um, and certain fizzy drinks before going on air. A few more tips from Berkeley Production CEO, author, and voiceover coach, Susan Berkeley. She warns you to avoid, firstly, yelling. Until you know how to do it properly, avoid yelling wherever possible. There's only in my time been one person who really pulled off yelling, and I think it's just because of the era that it was in. Um, I literally woke up every morning with this guy screaming in my ear, and I haven't heard anyone uh, pull it off again since. Not being physically fit, number two. When your overall physical vitality is down, your voice is one of the first places where it shows. Third, calling into the radio station by phone. Um, when, ref when reporting in by phone, don't speak with the phone tucked in between your ear and your chin like this when you're carrying things around. You want, to, you want to try and uh, not sound like a kidnapper who's busy trying to demand uh, a ransom. 
by using um, a headset or uh, earpieces or AirPods or whatever you have. Number four, avoid not warming up. Good speech takes muscle, and we just spoke about this in detail. All you need to do is take a couple of minutes to do some warm-up exercises for your voice. Number five, speaking beneath your natural pitch. Uh, so some people habitually speak from the very bottom of their pitch range, range mistakenly thinking that this will um, make them seem more authoritative and forceful. Unfortunately, this puts great strain on your voice because I wasn't made to speak so deeply. It's just not our, how our voices were made. Number six, avoid excessive throat clearing. This one can be difficult for people with um, specific allergies uh, or some people do it out of nervous habit, but it can really damage your vocal cords. Uh, what I want us to do now is, is to read Susan's practical suggestions for 10 common complaints, which is on page uh, 212 of Beyond Powerful Radio. She starts with number one. Um, the complaint is, I hate my voice. I can't believe people make me, people pay me to speak. I'm just waiting for the day they come and tell me it's all been a horrible, terrible mistake. Her solution is anyone who has any success in the entertainment field has had this thought at one time or another. As we mentioned earlier, the voice we hear inside our head is not the same as the voice we hear when we speak. Um, listening to a recording of your voice will show you the way you sound to others. This can be a shock and take some time getting used to. If it's any comfort, um, most people hate the way they sound. Try to put these feelings aside and learn to critique your voice as if you were giving gentle feedback to your best friend. Work on your weaknesses, but also appreciate your strengths. In time, you'll learn to take all of this much less personally. Number two then. Get that puking DJ sound out of your voice. Solution. You need to sound more conversational. Try working without headphones whenever possible. If you need them while you're on the air, keep the headphones on your one ear only um, or turn the volume way down. As, a, as you listen to your air check, ask yourself, do I speak this way in normal conversation? The best radio creates the illusion of a one-on-one -on -one conversation between friends, not the voice of God from Mount Olympus speaking to the little people. Number three there, your voice is weak, you need more power. Solution, psych yourself up before you go on air. Pro athletes do it all the time. Check your posture, use lots of body language, gesture freely with your hands. You'll see I do it all the time. I feel like I'm an Italian. I have knocked over so many glasses in my years and broken so many of them because I speak with my hands. Wear comfortable clothing that, that, wear comfortable clothing that doesn't restrict your breathing. Start a fitness program to get, uh, to get vocal energy. You need physical energy. Eat lean before you go on air. Number four, you sound too breathy. Solution, there are two common problems with breathiness. The first is when the speaker, usually a woman, speaks in an exaggeratedly breathy manner. Some women believe that a breathy voice makes her sound more vulnerable and feminine. The second problem is misplaced breathing. The speaker exhales too much air in the middle of a thought and gives the impression that he or she is, exhaust, is exhausted or gasping for air. Both of these problems can be fixed by training. Number five, you mumble, you need to improve your enunciation. Solution, vowels add color to speech. Consonants add, cal add clarity. If people are telling you that you mumble, you're probably dropping your consonants, most commonly fi final Ds, Ts, Gs, things like that. You're also probably speaking too fast. Short daily practice sessions with a recording device are needed. Read from a newspaper, read a book, uh, go slowly, making sure that you enunciate clearly. Again, all of these are easily fixable. Number six, your regional accent is too strong. Solution, get a dictionary and study the diacritical markings. These will give you the correct pronunciations of the standard American vowel sounds. Practice them as best you can. Overall, this is a very difficult problem to cure, without regular one-on-one -on -one sessions with an accent reduction specialist.
Number seven, you don't sound warm and friendly enough. This is an easy solution. Smile. When you go on air and you smile, you immediately sound warm and friendly and inviting. Okay, versus when you don't smile. There's immediately a difference. If you need to get into that habit, keep a mirror near the mic to make sure there's a smile on your face whenever the mic is on. Number eight, your voice is too high. There's a lot of women who get this specific one. The thing is, some of us are tenors, some of us are baritones. All voices are beautiful when properly played. One of the most common causes of a high, uh, thin voice is nervous tension, as we've mentioned. Deep abdominal breathing will help you stay relaxed so that your voice can sound to its best. Number nine, by the end of your show, your voice sounds tired and hoarse. Your solution here is when you're run down, your voice is the first thing to go. We said this earlier also, but I need to reiterate, when you are run down, your voice is the first thing to go. If you smoke, stop immediately. If you don't smoke, avoid smoky environments like bars and clubs. Make an appointment with the throat doctor to rule out any medical problems. As a healthy voice, should stay strong throughout an entire air shift. You could also be suffering from allergies and things like dairy products, again, makes this worse. Number 10, your voice sounds boring and monotonous. The solution, put the fun back in your voice. Practice reading children's stories. Practice reading children's stories or trashy romance no novels aloud in an ex exaggerated manner. Work with a mirror by the mic. Don't worry if you look silly or stupid. The sillier you look, the better you will sound. If there's emotion on your face and in your eyes, we will hear it in your voice. This is radio. No one can see you anyway. Study the greats. Find and record voice models. Try and imitate them to pick up nuances of inflection and pacing. Remember that although not everyone can have a great voice, all voices can be worked and improved upon. So if we just put it all together and give a... Um, Give a summary. Audiences will listen to people who do not have great voices but have something to say, but will spend very little time listening to a beautiful voice that says nothing. Okay, I don't, I don't care how beautiful your voice is. If you speak for three minutes and you say nothing, the chances of me listening to you again are zero. Number two, technique and care of the voice are key to making the most of the voice that you have. We've, um, we've given you an array of things now that you can do to protect your voice and to look after your voice, so make sure to follow them. Number three, complaints about a voice can be addressed and the problem solved with solutions offered in this chapter by the solutions that we just read. And number four, just to reiterate, although not everyone can have a great voice, all voices can be worked on, can be worked with and improved upon. And that brings us to the end of this lesson, but just to make sure that we end off on the correct note, is the last word from the legendary Mal Blanc, who voiced over 5,000 characters. That's all, Bye.